is silicone a trigger or implants a trigger i think for a susceptible individual and then every single the you know for everybody listening so every time i take out a device i did the same thing i would do uh, uh for the many years i did cancer reconstruction i always take all the scar tissue out and we always culture it and send it pathology you don't ever want to miss recurrent cancer that would cause the patient potentially their life or you don't want an underlying infection. So uh, in 2016, I was explanting a, a breast cancer patient who just wanted to go flat. And uh, it was in a hospital. I want to say they had underlying cardiac disease. That's why I was at a hospital. And on a hospital where, um, as Dr. Tall knows, you, you take a basically like a Q-tip and do a swab effect, or you know, you're just rubbing it around the capsule and you send it off. And, Typical, you know, stuff will be like normal flora or too little to, you know, recognize. This came back an E. coli infection. So mm -hmm. this lady had an indolent E. coli infection for an undetermined amount of time that did not show up on her uh, white blood cell count or her uh, uh, diagnostic studies or exam. There's nothing. Zero. I was like, well, how many of these have I fucking missed in my life? Mm -hmm. So I published last year a consecutive series of 700 I think it's 698, 700, that shows that 29% have bacterial contamination. This is huge. 